Hey, it's dessert day here in camp and y'all are in for a good one. You are an old classic. Pineapple upside down cake mm, from homemade scratch it is. You can do this in a Dutch oven. You will impress so many people. And guess what? We even use a power tool in this episode. So come on and let's get her done. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the banks of the Red River. Ooh, it is a great day, and ooh, what do we got cooking today on some Cowboy Cooking with Kent Rollins? Very popular pineapple upside down cake. Hey, a lot of people fix them, but we're fixing to put our twist on one, and everything that we use will be down there in the little description below. And hey, for all you new viewers that might just be joining us right now for the first time, be sure and hit that subscribe button, because we don't want you to miss out on any of these recipes that we got going on. And today, I do like a dessert, I do. And the Beagle's got a sweet tooth and so does Marmaduke. So let's get this upside down cake to go in and then we can turn it right side up and eat it. Now you know, cooking cakes in a Dutch oven can be a little tricky anyway because you're dealing with some moisture and you're dealing with some wind, always in our country anyway. But this one's got that extra little hard factor to it that you can get by if you just pay attention. What is it? A lot of brown sugar on the bottom with some butter. You get that caramelized effect but also it can burn quicker. But we're gonna show you how to manage that today to where you can do this. Hey, you'll be the star of the neighborhood and the campgrounds when you got this one going. So we have got a 10 inch Dutch oven here and we have melted one half stick of butter as you can see in there. And we're gonna combine that with some brown sugar. So we're gonna use a half a cup of brown sugar, give or take 14 granules and see what I'm talking about. This stuff has a mind of its own and it'll come out whenever it gets ready. So. We're just gonna sprinkle it around in here and we're gonna have to mash it and incorporate it all into that butter. So let me get this little spatula here because I want this to be a good little thing on the bottom to where it's got some of that butter and that brown sugar to make sort of a paste. It's time for some pineapple. Big, you a pineapple tree climber? So we got her spread out, we did. And look what we did. We climbed the pineapple tree and got us some of these pineapple rings. So. Just make sure that everybody's got a place to be. I think it's gonna come out pretty close to the right amount, folks. Looky there, just to fit, and one left over that we can fill in the cracks. Save that juice, cause I wanna use it later. And we got all them little holes in there. We gotta fill them with something. I don't know what it's gonna be, but I'm thinking, what is it? Marciano cherries, yes it is. And say, do you be having the gout? This is a medical commercial. If you got some of that gout, an old cowboy trick is you don't soak your feet in that juice, you drink it. It is good for that, but they're also good eating. Well, we got our seven cherries counted out in there. And one thing I like if I'm using me some cherries is some almond extract. So we're just gonna give these a little light sprinkling of this to get them some of that flavor because almond extract and cherries go well and they all go well with pineapple, they do. Give it a good stirring so you get some of that in there. And guess where these fit? A round deal go in a round deal. It don't go in a square one, but it go in that. Now, a lot of folks be splitting these in half and laying them in there. Nah, ain't no sense in splitting them. Let's just set them right down in there and get them in the right spot. And I'll say this dish already looks pretty. Look at that extra juice we had there. We'll just pour it right in there. So, well, we got that just sitting there waiting on us put together. Let's get these dry ingredients mixed. Now, you need to mix these in a separate bowl. We're gonna use about a cup and a half of flour. Now to that, we're gonna add about, I'd say a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, maybe a half. That's all it takes. Two teaspoons of baking powder that much there's a little humidity so we dumped in a little extra so we got our dry mixed up well we set it aside it is time to make the batter and this is just a typical cake batter a third of a cup of shortening or what i would call crisco or lard that's what i prefer anyway then we're going to add two-thirds of a cup of sugar now when you get it to this point i like to go ahead and sort of mash that sugar and that crisco together that way when we break out our automatic guess what we got folks everybody's been wanting to see it again what is it it is the power tool in the kitchen again you got to have one of these one egg we're going to put in there so we're going to use a cap full of vanilla which is about a teaspoon full put her right in there Guess what happens now, folks? It is time to run the power tool.
Well, you want to make sure that you got that good and smooth. Ain't no lumps in there nowhere. And what are we going to do now? Two-thirds of a cup of cow juice we are. So let's get her to the two-third mark, which is about there. We're going to mix this just a second before we go to adding flour to it. And we're going to just add this flour gently. Be careful not to over stir this. We just sort of want to fold it around to where we can get it incorporated, but we ain't going to whoop it to death nor stir it too much. And just keep adding you a little flour. And I don't know if you know it or not, but I think the beagle is cleaning off the mixer bowl over here. Maybe not. Now we're just going to pour this out and evenly spread it over that. So just go to put you some dollops here, there, and yonder. And then we'll spread it out to where it all fits just right. We don't want to leave none of this in here. But I hear the beagle saying, yeah, it's okay, Dad. You can leave a little in. Take your little rubber spatula and just try to spread this evenly to where you cover everything up we got it to that point folks thing but one thing to do and that is to bake it like this and turn it upside down so meet me over here to the fire and let's get it going well you see me put it on a tall trivet now the reason for this tall trivet is we got to cook it slow and this is one way that we can regulate heat we're not putting this on something short or setting it directly in the coals now you see me put a pretty good light circle of coals pretty good distance from that dutch oven that way we can start out slow if we need to speed things up or we need to do something we can push them coals back in there but there is never any coals directly underneath this thing unless we need to target some heat right at the end the top we got covered pretty light as well the wind is blowing pretty hard today 25 mile an hour so we're going to have to rotate to take care of this wind even out our hot spots the top one way bottom the other that way if we got a hotter spot on one side or the other we got it took care of but you want to cook this as slow as you can especially with all that brown sugar and butter there on the bottom so say you're out there camping and you got all these ingredients and you want to cook this but you ain't got no trivet it can still be done folks just make sure that you have even a lighter ring of coals and you're a pretty good distance from it heat will travel especially on a day like today you might can microwave something all right, folks, I want to tell you something. It's pretty hot on this side. I need to go ahead and pull some of these coals back over here a little more because unlike other cakes, there is no cake batter on the bottom. This juice is bubbling up around it. So we're sort of caramelizing that bottom is all that is happening. And with that batter on top, we're just going to cook it. So relatively, this is a shorter cooking time than you would have if you was cooking a whole cake. So let me back this heat off just a little. And how would y'all like to take a look? I sure would. So let's see what's happening in here because I bet you with the way the wind's blowing there's a little browning already taking Whoa. effect. So you can see that things are beginning to cooking. It is a little jiggly right here so we're going to let it set. Let her keep minding its own business but I am going to back these coals off even some more because that bottom is pretty close it is. You can see see that brown sugar how that brown color is coming around here so I know that stuff is doing what it's supposed to. That's why we're going to slow this down even more so we don't burn none of that bottom. Now you've seen us cook some cakes before to where we maybe even had to target the heat and we had to slow it down or maybe cook it right in the middle, top and bottom to get that jiggle out of it. But this is not that way because all this is right there on top already so we're just waiting for this to brown and get firm and set up. Now if you think this is cooking even too fast for you, set it off the fire over there. Get it off them coals. That's why I backed off this heat because I think we got her slowed down enough that we are on the money. I think it is time to do a little checking. I do. We're first going to see, whoo, that browning is spreading out and getting more even. And we want to see, yeah, 
sort of got that spongy deal to it. Look what I got, a toothpick fresh from the pasture. It is clean plumb through, folks. It is a done deal, it is. So I'm going to meet you at the table, I am. Woo-wee! I don't know if y'all can smell it, but I can. And it is smelling some of that good. Now at this point, I like to take something and run around the edge of this to make sure that it is away from that cast iron because we're going to let it set just a second before we do anything. But remember this here toothpicker? I want you to poke you a few holes in there. You can poke as many as you like. I'm going to put like six or nine or ten. Now you remember that juice we saved back in that can of pineapple juice packed in heavy syrup? We're going to use, I would say, maybe a tablespoon or a little more. About the same of the cherry juice. That is all mixed up well. And guess what's going to happen? We're just going to pour it around on this cake to where it'll find its way through there. Get you a plate, something that'll fit down in there. Now, if you're using something that you can get it right down there in amongst that, that's even better. And let all that magic begin. And folks, we're going to say a little prayer that the cake comes out. Lord, we just help you that we just thank you so much and we hope the cake comes out of there. Amen. How long do we let that set? We're going to let it set about three or four or five minutes. That's what we're going to do. And let it just sit there and ooze all that goodness down in there. Duke, do you think it came out? What do you think, Duker? Good Lord answers prayers, you know. So thank you, Jesus. Here you go, folks. Let's see what is happening. It tried to come out all the way except oh. for two little pineapples it did. Now, this would have probably worked better would you have had the right size of plate yeah, that would have been sticking on there. Ain't that a pretty sight? It is to me. Now, I do have you a tip there. If you're cooking this in a Dutch oven, been nice would you have had a plate that was the same size that fit right down there on top of that cake. That way, when it fell, that extra 11 and a half foot, it wouldn't have broke the sideboard off this one side. But hey, I'm going to tear it up anyway when I eat it. See, can we reach under here and get him all? be liking me some of that right there and I got a little piece for my two taste testers right off the bat Duke big hey big big hey Duke right here hey what there any tail wags to reap the benefits of your work and the good Lord's answered prayers let's take us a bite I want that cherry right in there too Sweetness it is. Packs in my yoga and my taekwon dough. I am because that right there is a great deal. But the caramelization that you get from the brown sugar and the pineapple juice and the butter right there on the bottom, it sort of reminds me of a pineapple cinnamon roll when you get there. I mean, this stuff right here is good, old fashioned taste at its best. So we really do thank you for dropping by the banks of the Red River today to watch our video. And as always, we tip our hat to the service men and women and all the veterans, them in the states and abroad who have kept this country safe. God bless y'all and we hope that you are safe wherever you're at. To all our regular viewers and our new viewers, hey, get in here and let's have a big old group hug. I do love a hug. Because what does Mr. Rogers say? Remember, I have told you, the world needs more good neighbors. And that first neighbor starts with each one of y'all. Ring the dingy dong bell, member, at your neighbor's house. Take him a pineapple upside down cake. Thank you again from the bottom of our heart. We hope you enjoyed this. God bless you, each and every one. And I'll see you down the upside down, right side down, pineapple upside down cake trail.